listening to Four Point Stance Women's Tackle Football Talk on Fox Sports Radio, 1340 AM and 96.9 FM. I am Ashley Edmiston, and this is going to be a long one because we got 33 games to talk about this week. So we're going to go ahead and start up with our first set of matchups from the IWFL. we got two games. First one is Austin Yellow Jackets at South Texas Lady Crushers. Now, South Texas is a new team, so I have no idea what we're going to be getting into. However... That could work in their favor, yet Austin has a little more experience. So, yep, there's that one. We have Houston Energy at the Tulsa Threat. Both of those teams are experienced, but again, it is week one for them, so that game could go anywhere. And the long set, we have the WFA, and they have the most games, obviously. So let's go ahead and kick this off. We have Arlington Impact at Houston Power. Now, Arlington is used to playing Dallas, Houston, and a few others in the area. So is Houston. With week one, I won't know what kind of a matchup we're looking at until the scores come in, but I'm pretty sure either it's going to be a really close game or it's going to be a blowout. I mean, there's no in-between here. They're, they may have some lead changes, but again, I won't know until I really get the score. We got Minnesota Vixen at Madison Blaze, and Minnesota has the years. Madison has kind of taken over from... Other teams, the the Wisconsin uh, Warriors used to be in that area. And that one, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm probably thinking it's going to go to Minnesota, but can't guarantee that. Next game we have is St. Louis Slam at Indy Crash. St. Louis is last year's Division II national champs, so they've got a lot to fight for. But Indy does have... A lot that they are trying to set up. I know that they were really pushing in the off season to kind of build themselves up and recruit and just work on their skills. Next, we got Keystone Assault at Baltimore Nighthawks. And that game, yeah, I won't know. I'm not sure on the, what kind of matchup we're looking at. Baltimore does have some skill, but at the same time, not exactly sure. Now we have Jacksonville Dixie Blues at Tampa Bay Inferno. Jacksonville's been around a little bit. Tampa Bay's been around a little bit. But knowing some of the players from Tampa, I'm betting that one might go in Tampa's favor. Next, we have the Mile High Blaze at Nebraska Stampede. Mile High is a little bit of a newer team. Nebraska is a little more of a veteran team in the way of the franchise. So who knows how that one's going to go, but I'm thinking it might go Nebraska. Tennessee Train at Cincinnati Sizzle. Tennessee trains a new team, and Cincinnati's been around a while. And unless Tennessee has some stars, I'm betting it's going to go in Cincinnati's favor. Next one we have is Austin Outlaws Dallas Elite. And honestly, I think Dallas is going to have a blowout on that. It's just too many years of monitoring and keeping an eye on how Dallas plays. Austin could surprise us. But in the past, they haven't exactly scored any very many points against Dallas. Next, we have Santa Fe Dukes at the Rocky Mountain Thundercats. Santa Fe has been in the IWFL for a little bit. I believe they were in the Spring League prior to that. Rocky Mountain is a relatively new team. So this is a matchup that I'd have to wait a couple weeks before I make any comments on. But in general, it'd probably be a close game seeing that both teams are... Starting brand new, new league, new areas, and again, you'll have to wait a couple weeks. Next, we have Inland Empire Ravens at Kern County Crusaders. Uh, Those two teams were actually kind of built off of the West Coast Lightning, the team that actually beat Portland in the playoffs last year. So that one's going to be a tough call because I remember the Lightning being a strong team, but the Ravens and the Crusaders being within the same area, same recruiting pool, there could be some interesting plays out of this one. Next up, we got Columbus Comets at the Pittsburgh Passion. Um, honestly, I think Pittsburgh's going to take this one, and it's either going to be a blowout or Comets aren't going to really score all that much. Um, just from past experience, again, a lot of teams can surprise us. Unfortunately, though, Pittsburgh's pretty consistent. Next one is Connecticut Hawks at New England Nightmare, and who knows if this game will even happen. I know the Hawks seem to forfeit a lot of games. D- 
due to injury or just can't travel. So if this game even happens, who knows? Next game we have, and keep in mind none of these are in any order. It's just whatever order I have them typed up as. Uh, this next game is Tacoma Trauma at my former team that I used to play on, the Portland Fighting Shockwave. And a couple things. Tacoma, either either it's going to be the Tacoma from a couple years ago that made it to the playoffs, or it's going to be a whole new Tacoma that we don't know on. Um, Fighting Shockwave has had a few changes, so not sure. They are playing in a stadium they're not used to. Well, they practice that, but they're not commonly played on the Phillies used to play on it back when the teams were separate but other than that I uh, again once I see the score I'll know more of what both teams look like then we go north a little bit to their rival the Seattle Majestics at the Southern Oregon Lady Gades and with Holly Custis back from her injury honestly I think Seattle is really going to take this I know it, Seattle was one of the few teams that the Lady Gates really seemed to score on. But when you get a key player in back on defense, and sometimes it's sad to say that one player can change a whole dynamic of a team, but you'd be amazed. I honestly don't, no offense Lady Gates, but I do see Seattle kind of being, kind of bowling you over it. Now, you could surprise me, and I hope you do, but... Unfortunately, that's just too many years of me personally going against Seattle to know this. Um, next matchup we have is Huntsville Tigers at Music City Misfits. Honestly, I know nothing about these two teams. I've This is probably one of the first years I've ever heard of them. I'm sure they've been around a while. So that's a score that when it comes to me, we'll see what we get into. Next one we have is Carolina Phoenix at the Hampton Roads Lady Gators. Uh... I've played Phoenix before, so they're a pretty strong team. It's been a little while, and I know some players have retired, others have come back. Hampton Roads, that's a new team, so it's in Carolina's favor despite them traveling. But that one either could be a blowout or a close game, unfortunately. There's not much more to say on that. Minnesota Machine at Kansas City Titans. Now this one's tough. Because Kansas City is known to blow out teams, and with it being home, puts them at quite an advantage. But Minnesota Machine does have a little bit to prove for themselves. Um, they have a little bit of a fire to really work with. So it could give Kansas City trouble, but at the same time, not entirely sure. Uh, then we have the Orlando Anarchy at Daytona Wave Runners. And Orlando is dedicating this season to not only the shooting in the area, they did end up losing one of their coaches, and one of their players was one of those injured in that shooting. So they're kind of really pushing this Orlando strong. So with Daytona being a new team, Daytona better watch out. Orlando's coming for them. Next matchup we have is Acadiana Zydeco at Arkansas Wildcats. And the Zydeco were actually in the tier three championship i believe i believe they may have won that one i don't i'll have to double check on that so arkansas while they've been around a tiny bit um uh, zydeco might give them a little bit of trouble next matchup is the dc divas at the philadelphia phantoms and dc divas are actually last year's iwfl or not iwfl wfa champions uh, repeat champions at that and honestly sorry Philadelphia even though I do know quite a few players on that team sorry Philadelphia I think the Divas are kind of going to own you like they've done in the past um, next matchup is Utah Blitz at Ventura Wolfpack um, that one's going to be a close game because uh, the Blitz considering that they have to compete with the Utah Falcons from the WFL for stuff and whatever and Ventura has to compete with the other California teams their pool is a little limited and yet they do very well with what they have and I'm betting that's going to be a close game uh, the next matchup is Toledo Reign at Cleveland Fusion and if that one happens Toledo has been known to forfeit a couple times it's probably going to go in Cleveland yeah 
Toledo's probably, I don't know, that one isn't going to be a close game, sorry. Next matchup is the Central Cal War Angels at the Sin City Trojans, and I'll tell you right now, it's probably going to be at least a 50-point shutout by the War Angels, because that's just unfortunately how they've always done it, especially the last couple of years. I wish I could say otherwise. If the score doesn't reflect that, I'll be surprised. Uh, Chicago Force at West Michigan Mayhem. This one might be a close game, just in the fact that West Michigan really, really, really wants to take down Chicago. But Grisafi's back, so she's back out of retirement. And plus, Chicago has the most in Team USA representatives, so Chicago's probably going to try to find a way to get past DC to get in the finals, or if not, beat them in the finals. So... Chicago's really going to do everything they can to put themselves ahead. Next ones are Atlanta Phoenix at the Derby City Dynamite. And it's been a little while since I've heard of from the Atlanta Phoenix, so I'm kind of glad that they're back. Uh, Derby City can hold their own in that division. And honestly, I think that one might be a close game. So once I get the scores, I, we'll have a relative idea of what we're looking into. I've said this in the past that most most of these games, the first week is always the toughest. It usually takes about two or three weeks before you can figure out a team. And then some teams, you can see right away what's going to happen. This one, I think it's going to be a couple weeks before I see what kind, what kind of a team we're looking at. Next matchup is the return of San Diego, the San Diego Surge, and at the Pacific Warriors. And unfortunately, unless San Diego has totally changed i do think the surge are going to have a very high score game against pacific warriors they did it the last time they met in the past like usually most of the games ended up being by at least 40 points we have the detroit dark angels at flint city riveters and unless flint city's gotten a little stronger detroit might pretty much have this one i'm not entirely sure that, again, is a game that I will have to see a couple weeks of scores before I can really, really make a decision and what I can give you on input. Um, this next game, Central Florida Shine at Miami Fury, may not even happen. Um, rumor has it that the Shine may have actually had to hang the cleats up for the season already. Um... I'm hoping not. I've, I've been in that situation before where you go with a team and then don't have a season. It sucks. So I hope for Central Florida's sake they do have a game, but I hope for Central Florida's sake that if they do have the game, that Miami doesn't kill them. And this is the return of Miami. They did take last season off. So if it does happen, this could be a close game or it could be a shutout. Uh, the next game we have is the New York Knockout at the Main Mayhem. And... That one, it, it's been a while since, well, Maine was in the IWFL last year, coming into the WFA this year, and the New York Knockout have been around a little bit. And this is a game that I personally will have to wait a couple weeks before I can even give a thought on it, because I'm not entirely sure what we're looking at in playing style. And then the last game I've got for you, out of this long podcast, I know I've kind of quickly done an overview we have the new york sharks at the richmond black widows and new york sharks are were a strong team when i was in the wfl even while i was in the wfa playing they were still strong um the only reason they're in the wfa is for well among one of the reasons is for travel that they're now playing teams that are closer to them and richmond obviously being just within the DMV area or close to it. It's only like a few hours drive. Um, unless the Black Widows surprise me, I honestly do think the Sharks will take this one. It may be double digits. It may be a blowout. I'm, again, I don't know. This is a tough week. Um, so pretty much as I quickly go through all those games, that's 33 matchups to look forward to this week. Um, next week I'll have even more. Um, biggest thing is, yeah, if you're in these areas, either 
check out your teams or go to their respected Facebook pages and keep up to date. I will try my best if to at least keep you up to date on what I have. Um, if I happen to miss any football games that you know of for women's football that I did not mention, please send me a message either on Twitter, which is my handle is at Weevil, W34VI1, or you can send it to me on Fox Sports, that uh, 1340 AM Fox Sports on Twitter or on our Facebook page. And just make sure you have the hashtag four, as in the number four, PT Stance, and we'll make sure it gets to me and I will be sure to keep an eye out for those games. Um... Otherwise, this is pretty much how the uh, podcast is going to go from now on, on Sunday or Monday. This one may end up being on Monday, around noonish, if not two at the latest. I will have this, all the scores for you. Otherwise, in general, Wednesdays will be matchups, Sunday or Monday will be scores. So you've been listening to Four Point Stance, Women's Tackle Football Talk on Fox Sports Radio, 1340 AM and 96.9 FM. And just keep tuning in and getting your ultimate list of women's tackle football.